The number one challenge I see students having with any kind of exam is that they don't understand the questions on an exam. This is highly problematic, and if you can relate, leave a comment below if you've ever experienced this. In this part one video of a series, I'll present two tips of how to approach solving financial exam questions, primarily in the context of the ARE, practice management section for the architecture exam. Whether you're an aspiring architect or an entrepreneur, these concepts are relevant. We'll begin with some sample problems on the concept of utilization rate and break it down to the exact steps I personally take to answer these types of questions. Stay to the end because I'm going to provide a bonus tip. Here's a sample problem of utilization rate that might show up in an architecture exam. You'll have a table with potentially roles provided, such as senior associate, you know, job captain, drafter. You might have the utilization rate provided in this case. Here we have 40% for the senior associate, 75% for the job captain, 100% for the drafter. And then we have a salary provided, an annual salary for each person. To find the firm's utilization rate, you need to know each of the person's utilization rate. And here it's given as a salary in dollars. Step one is figure out what the question is asking you to find. That is my first tip to all of you. What is the question asking you to find? In this case, we know that it is asking us for the firm's utilization rate. And in this step, I would go ahead and write out what the utilization rate formula is. Direct labor divided by the total labor. The problem here is given in terms of salary. It could have been also given in terms of hours, but here we have it as salary. We must have prior knowledge that this can be in terms of dollars or this can be in terms of hours. And if you want to know more about utilization rate, there is actually a separate video in the link description below. Step two. I need to know direct labor if I'm going to find utilization rates. Let's figure out the direct labor amount in dollars. Here we're given a utilization rate and we're given a salary. I'm going to assume that you know what utilization rate means. And again, if not, please see the video link in the description. Now to get the actual utilization rate in terms of the salary or the amount of dollars from that person's salary that went towards charging the client, we would take the utilization rate and multiply that by the salary of that person to get their direct labor in dollars. So in this case, it's quite simple. I would take 40% or 0.4, multiply that by $180,000 for the senior associate. That gives us $72,000. For the job captain, 75% utilization rate, 0.75 multiplied by $120,000. That's $90,000. And for the drafter, 100% utilization rate is just one by their $75,000 amounts to $75,000. Now we take the total amount and we get $237,000. That is the direct labor. Step three, to find total labor, we know that total labor is gonna include all the salary, the salary that went towards indirect and direct expenses. In this case, we'll go ahead and just use the numbers as they are listed there in the salary column. We'll just do $180,000 plus $120,000 plus $75,000, and that yields $375,000. Step four, plugging in the numbers. We have our total labor and we found our direct labor, $237,000 divided by $375,000. Multiply that number by 100 to get it in terms of a percentage. We'll round up, that is 63 so 63% of the firm's employees' time is currently billable on project-related expenses. 
our final answer is 63%. We were able to figure that out because we understood, again, what the question was asking you to find. We knew that it was asking for the firm's utilization rate. The first tip is, again, understand what the question is asking you and break it down here in terms of what it's asking you. Identify the actual formula so that you can look for the exact variables that you need to plug into that formula. The second tip is familiarize yourself with the different ways a concept will show up on an exam. Here, we're still going to look at utilization rate. We're going to look at finding the utilization rate of this employee, and it's given in terms of a table showing the projects that they're working on, the roles that they have on each of the projects, and the hours on that project. Remember in the previous example how we said that the utilization rate formula can either show up in terms of dollars as a cost or in terms of time as hours. So it's really important to figure out and understand how that question or that concept for utilization rate might show up on an exam. Let's jump into this problem. We're looking at the different projects that this person has. We're not told exactly what their title is, but that doesn't matter. They work in an architecture firm. We know that they're working on different projects and they have different roles. In step one, we're told to find the utilization rate and in hours, UR equals direct labor over total labor. Step two, we know that for direct labor, direct labor is really billable labor, billable time project related. You have to understand that definition about direct labor to know how to answer this problem. The first thing that I would do if I were looking at a problem like this is I would go through each of the projects and look at what were the roles on that project? What were they doing? What was the task? And ask yourself the question, is this direct labor? Meaning, is it project related? Is it billable or not? and just identify with a check mark the ones that are project related. Westlake Project, this person was a project manager. Let's call her Jane. Jane was a project manager on Westlake Project. She spent 20 hours. Project manager as a position role, yes, that is directly billable to a client. So we're gonna say that this is direct labor. On the Miramont Project, Jane worked as a construction administrator and she has five hours in that role. Construction administration, is that considered direct labor? Yes, it is. Bell's Tower Project, competition proposal request, five hours. Is this direct labor? This is the question here. If you're working on a competition in an architecture firm setting, you've just received a proposal request and you would like to work on that and submit as an architecture firm a proposal, for a new stadium, for example, you don't have a client yet. So you can't charge your hours directly to a project because there is no client to bill to yet. So those five hours are not direct labor. Next, setting for the AREs. Five hours that Jane put into studying for the AREs this particular week. And if I didn't say that before, I'm sorry, but really this entire table is for weekly hours. So this is the total amount of hours that Jane would put on all of her projects. Out of the week, she spends five hours studying for the ARES. Is there a client to charge to? Is this considered direct labor? No. And finally, the project JW Melbourne. Jane worked as in the schematic design phase of this project and spent 15 of her total hours and is schematic design billable? Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and say that. So now we know what we need to add up to get our direct labor. That's 20 plus 5 plus 15. Total hours for direct labor equals 40 hours. You notice we have the units in hours in time. Step number three, right? We just found direct labor. Now we want to find total labor. We need to understand what total labor means in this case. It means everything. Whether it's built to a client or not built, it's everything. 
Next step is find that total labor. Total labor is going to be 20 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 15 equals 50 hours. I highly recommend writing the units when you're trying to solve a problem. Now, step four is the final. Let's plug it in to find, again, utilization rate for Jane in hours. Direct labor, we have 40 hours. Direct labor is coming from step two. And then step three, 50 hours of total labor. So we'll do 40 divided by 50 equals 0 0.8 or multiply that by 100 to get the percentage Jane's utilization rate of 80%. I know that utilization rate is going to be expressed as a percentage, but understanding that the problem might provide your direct labor and total labor in terms of dollars or in terms of time, hours, is the way to go to be able to solve and derive that percentage because the units are going to cancel out in the end. You can't simply just memorize the formulas and understand the definitions of each of the variables. It's really important to understand how the problem might show up on the exam. So in this case, you're prepared, you've practiced it, you've prototyped that experience before by doing this problem and again and again, and getting your mind accustomed to what it might see and having practiced it in advance to know that once you do get that kind of problem, you're ready to go to solve it. Now, I promised I would give you a bonus question and a bonus tip. So here we go. This is the third tip in this video. And this is actually, I know I said the previous tip was really, really important. This one is probably just as, maybe even more. My third tip is don't be fooled by extra words in a problem. In fact, anticipate that you're going to get extra information in a problem that you're not going to need to solve the actual problem. Let's read the problem together. A principal at an architecture firm is paid $80 an hour. So that's their hourly rate, okay? Some of their time is spent traveling and networking with potential clients, other times determining staffing hours. Roughly 32 hours out of 40 hours weekly are project related. The firm's net multiplier is 3.3. Find the hourly billable rate for the principal. Now, when I see a word problem like this, the first thing I like to do is either highlight or identify what I'm finding, what the problem is asking me to find. You know, look for keywords like find or look for or calculate. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a rectangle I'm just going to go ahead and underline what the problem is asking me to find. It's asking for the hourly billable rate for the principal. Okay, so we know what an hourly billable rate is. If we understand that concept, then we know that the hourly billable rate is the billable rate that an architecture firm will charge the client directly. That includes the net multiplier. The other thing I want to do is identify any other variables in this problem. Could be numbers or any other sort of specific information that might be really important in solving this problem. In the first sentence, we have $80 an hour. This is a good thing to note. 32 hours are project related, and we know that the net multiplier is 3.3. So let's go ahead and start with step one identify exactly what the problem is asking for. And I keep saying this again and again because I want to train you to follow these steps to answer these questions. This method works, but you have to follow it. To have a methodology when you're answering these questions means to be prepared and to know how you're going to break down the question and simplify it in a way that makes sense. So step one is identifying what the question is asking us to find. What's the final units of the answer as well? Here it's an hourly billable 
rate. And we know that an hourly billable rate is going to be given in terms of dollars an hour, an hourly rate of $80 an hour. And we also have 32 hours of direct labor. So we'll go ahead and write direct labor, 32 hours. And we know that 40 hours is total labor. This principal is spending eight out of their 40 hours on non-billable time. And then finally, we have this information of the net multiplier equals 3.3. And if you're not familiar with what a net multiplier is, I highly recommend watching the YouTube video on net multiplier. You can find the link in the description below. We've identified all the nuggets of information given and what we need to actually find. I'm gonna ask myself the following. What do I need to be able to find a billable rate? This is really key. What information do I need to find a billable rate? Well, automatically I know to find an hourly billable rate for an employee, I need to know the net multiplier and their hourly rate. In this case, I can look at my variables. Did they give me the hourly rate? Yes. Did they give me a net multiplier? Yes. Do I need direct labor or total labor? No. They've actually given us more information. And that's why I said for this tip, don't be fooled by extra words or numbers because I guarantee you the examiners are going to give you more information than you need to solve the problem. A lot of times it's really simple. In this case, we need to find the hourly billable rate. So don't get confused by all the other information. We know we can cross this off. We don't have to look at it anymore. And now we can proceed to the next step to answer the question. In step two, we'll go ahead and take our $80 an hour and multiply that by the net multiplier. And that amounts to $264 an hour. The net multiplier includes the employee's salary, benefits, overhead, profit. So the principal's utilization rate is given, but it's not needed to answer this question. And that's why we crossed it off in that step number one. Understanding what we're needing to find and then what are all the givens and then plugging that into the formula. And the formula here is hourly rate multiplied by your net multiplier equals your hourly billable rate. In summary, learn how NCARB asks questions for the ARES. You can memorize and learn these concepts, but until you learn to understand what the questions are really asking, it will be hard to pass the exam. NCARB will provide more info than you need, so do not be fooled by the extra words. Familiarize yourself with the different ways a concept might show up on an exam and what is the question asking you to find. Identify that first. Then you can plug in from the given. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment if you found it helpful. And if you have any other questions, I would be more than thrilled to hear from you and we'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. See you in the next video.